Hey guys, I'm not sure if you can see this, but we're noticing it all the time. And you got the perfect, uh, I don't know what they call it, dead zone water or something like that. So anyway, you got the beautiful blue green, then you got a line, and now it's just turned to brown. Brown. Yeah. Same depth. Same depth, same everything, yeah. Now I did notice that we got, uh, we got uh, oil rigs out there. I don't think that has anything to do with it. Uh, apparently it's the salt solution in the water. I think that everywhere we go, kind of noticing. You can see the perfect line. <laughs> right on. Right on, we're getting there, eh, buddy? Beautiful weather, yeah. fantastic. Lots of oil rigs. Uh -huh. Yeah. Waves aren't too bad. Sun shining. Yeah. I could do this forever. Well, considering this is probably what the probably the smoothest we've been. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. No. Except when we pulled in Veracruz that morning it was calm. Yeah. But aside from that, I think this is actually the calmest day. It's yeah. good stuff, I like it. Yeah, we're loving it actually. The feet are up and um, Stuff to look at, the oil rigs, a little bit of shoreline. Yeah, a little something to look at, it's great. Fish jumping. Fish jumping. Water changing color, that's kind of weird. Yeah. We haven't decided, it was, it was kind of like brown clumpy spots along, so we weren't quite sure if that was just a, uh, maybe the oil rigs. Rod figured out it was from the oil rigs, maybe drilling and stirring up the ground, I don't know. I don't know. No, so. They're everywhere. Yeah, but as you see, we're, we're rolling, we're rolling. But, best has ever been so far as knock on knock on the wood here yep we're doing it we're almost there we're getting there around eight o'clock we decided to bypass frontura frontura and uh, me and rod decided to head right to uh isla de carmen i believe that's the proper pronunciation of proper island basically that's where we're heading to and uh yeah we'll be there between anywhere between two and three p.m uh seas are good tons of oil rigs uh, luckily, we went through the majority of them uh, before it got dark. So now they're yeah, now they're dark to see. Yeah, now it's pretty sporadic. So um, I got the radar, and uh, the island of uh, Isla de Carmen it looks absolutely stunning. So we're gonna get Rodney in some tropical sand, some beach. We're gonna jump off the boat, do some swimming, and uh, we'll see what happens. If the weather holds out, we're gonna grab three, four hours sleep. And if not, we're going to spend the day uh, on a beach with some margaritas. Yeah. <laughs> Rodney hates margaritas, right? Oh, no, I love margaritas. margaritas. Alright guys, so what happened this morning, me and Rod? G'day Rod. G'day. 
So Rod and I left our anchorage, which was just basically another couple hundred feet down. Well, sorry, down that way. Just past the statue. And we went continuing down past that bridge. And we noticed on Google Maps there was a marina down and into a little cove, which is great because the weather is coming uh, this evening. Uh, everything's already starting to turn. Uh, long story short was um, we got there and, and uh, kind of checking out the situation and idling in and in and out of gear. I felt the front end dig. Luckily, the front end of my boat is deeper than the rest. I felt that dig in. And then... Um, Put one in reverse, put the other one in reverse. One of the motors snuffed. It was in. It was in the mud. Um, we were stuck. I was worried. Yeah, we were stuck. We were both worried. Yeah, it was not good. Um, I did feel a little bit of a oosh. And continually used the one motor to drag us out a little more. Then it started moving, fired up the other one, fired right up. At that point, I had lost my steering. <laughs> They were steering with engines. Uh, yeah, we were steering with engines, and, and uh, basically we have a sandbar, which is literally five feet away, just the way the channel is. It's, you can't go either side of it. And I spun the boat around, and I felt something let go. So, side note, I wanted to uh, videotape it, but I figured uh, <laughs> maybe it's now is not a good time. Probably wouldn't have been a great, but it would have been a great video, but yeah. yeah uh, not for Donnie's nurse. Uh, something spit at the back, and just like that, um, I didn't try to force the wheel or anything like that. I could tell something was wonky, and I don't know if it was tree branch or something got wedged in between the two. I don't know. Um, anyway, long story short is not one thing bent, one, not one thing broken, and uh, we got out of there, probably in there for a good hour oh, yeah. in, in full panic mode, and uh, we got out. So and then we continually went up and down this uh, shoreline, basically, right here, uh, checking for any docks or anything. And uh, basically, me and Rod have nowhere to go. So that marina, I give one star. <laughs> What's the one star? Because <laughs> hey, it used to be nice? Yeah, because it used to be nice. Yeah. We're assuming that nobody wanted to pay for the dredging there anymore, and that's why they actually just... And it shut down. It shut down. So not, not, we never even got close enough to actually see it. It was still another half a click, maybe? Half a click up from where we were sitting. Probably 500 meters, yeah. 500 meters. Anyway. Uh, anyway, guys, long story short is that we're here. Uh, we're waiting for another weather window. Um, we're hoping tomorrow it would be kind of sketchy if we do it. But well, we're going to hope for it, and uh, we'll see what happens. The weather changes here very, very frequently. So, anyway. I flagged down some fishermen, and I got a ride into town. Went yeah. into the market and got some food. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were just driving by driving by in their boat, and uh, Rod grabbed them. They came right by and picked them up. They got another one to bring them back out. And what else did you grab, Rod? You got uh, some steaks? Yeah, well, I got some rib steaks. Yeah. So I got baked potatoes, baked or potatoes to make some baked potatoes. Yeah. And yeah, a little bit of groceries. And he got off the boat. And I got off the boat. Which is oh, nice. he had a beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he had a El, El Grande Cerveza. Yeah. Yeah. So. Beers are big here. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Anyway, I hope everybody has a good night. Just wanted to keep you up to date. See ya. All right, so Rodney said he might be leaving in two or three days. So one thing he's got to do is he's just got to do jump it. Off the roof. He's got to do it. Five, okay. four. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Nicely done, Rodney, brother. Rodney, I had to do it once. Nice, brother. What great! And just to prove that we're in uh, Ciudad Mexico. <laughs> you did it, brother. I go again, again. You're on. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> right on, brother. Oh, hey, shit. Dad. Hey, is that a dolphin or a shark? <laughs> You're done fueling up. Just reached, just had enough holes. They that surrounded us. Yeah, they got a barrier around us just to make sure that everything's good. 
Then we have these boats over here. They're all named Don. Don something. Don something. Don something. They're kind of funny. Hey guys, we just got some fuel. I would have shown you a little bit more but on the way in, but it is a industrial commercial loading highway nightmare. That's the best way I can put it. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to videotape this going out, but I'm going to do my best for you. Um, getting fuel here was a challenge. Thank God my wife, Charlene, is able to translate this, that, the other thing. Um, Getting fuel in Mexico on a boat is a severe challenge, um, especially when you're Spanish. It sucks. Um, anyway, uh, they were okay. The ports in and out of Mexico closed randomly for no good reason. We could have left today at noon when the seas got down. We could not, given the fact that we were not allowed to leave the port um, and so forth. I'm going to turn the corner here, guys. I'll see if I can get more. Watch this shit for sure. Um, so today we were just about to pull into Kenpeshi. No, this wasn't our planned stop. We were planning on heading right to uh, Progressive. But at about 12 or 1 a.m., uh, we felt a little dish dish and slapped it into neutral extremely quick. And yeah, that's what we pulled out of the props, along with the fish still there. So, um, unfortunately, port side prop still has quite a bit. Uh, there's some other stuff. The only uh, the real problem was the yellow stuff on the starboard side, and we had this stuff on the port, and it's actually a weighted leaded rope. So, let's see lead on it. Um, there's fishermen out everywhere. There's not a light anywhere. Uh, finally, one of the guys came up because I was whistling at him and yelling at them. And uh, they came up and he said he had 10 nets out. Uh, they then tried to help. They drove away, obviously. Um, so basically, anyway, we got that done. We got the boat moving. The one motor is just in basically in the uh, idle position. I don't think it's got the free wheeling disc uh, clutch that's capable of it, so I have to leave it run. And um, we're getting going anyway. So we're going to go down. So throughout Chardonnay's journey, I am tracking uh, the crew and the boat on our Garmin Explorer, which pings me every 10 minutes as to their location and speed, etc. I've noticed at one point in time that they did 180 degrees, the uh, speed was at one kilometers an hour. So a friend of ours from uh, Ontario, Canada and myself who are tracking started texting each other trying to get a hold of the crew to figure out what was going on. Uh, we weren't able to get a hold of anyone so I waited about 20 minutes at which point in time I decided to call the Mexican Coast Guard and uh, helicopters were being dispatched to go and search for them. 
And finally, we did get a hold of Dawn who mentioned that they caught a net and they had to deal with the uh, emergency situation. So thankfully they were safe and uh, yeah, they just kept on cruising and we had to uh, find them a new location to do a, a quick stop uh, as soon as possible. Oh yeah, midnight swim. Uh, yeah. Both Rodney and I last night with a uh, underwater headlamp and a mask and uh, about three, three foot swells and uh, masks on and unfortunately we couldn't see anything and we were afraid the boat was going to land on our head as well. So. Anyway, we're going to see what we can do. Rodney's pretty confident that we're going to uh, take care of that at the rain. Oh, I'm driving down and getting it done. All right, Rodney's getting her done. Rodney got a half an hour of sleep last night, so I own that. <laughs> and we'll see. We'll see anyway. And uh, you know what? Hopefully we can get some. Oh, yeah. And by the way, too, my generator decided on leaking water. Uh, I don't know if I blew a hose. I don't know what happened, but I seen the bilge light come on. And I just shut the seacock off and I just left it alone. We had enough dealings with the nets. So anyway, it's been a long um, seven, eight, nine hours. That's six miles an hour. So a little, uh, little strangeness. But we're almost there, guys. And uh, hopefully the marina's great. We'll send you lots of videos. <laughs> so uh, Rodney wanted to swim. And also we had a clump of rope on there. And a little concerned about uh, Rodney going down there. And uh, within about two minutes... Rodney's already got the one side cleared. Yeah, that's just one side. And uh, he's just about to tackle the other side. So it's friggin' awesome. And uh, the other side's more net than rope. More net than rope. But the other side was really shaky. So I'm curious to see the ball of stuff that comes out of there. Uh, we're now at, uh, where are we? Campeche Marina. And this place is stunning. The grounds are unbelievable. Um, the staff are wonderful, and uh, let's check out the staff. Check out the staff. Uh, infinity pools all around the bar, tiki hut, restaurants, uh, beautiful beach right there. And uh, I'll, give, I'll bring you guys for a tour in a bit. Nice, Rodney's going down for the uh, port side now. This was the side that was pretty shitty. This was really shaking up. The <laughs> <laughs> so this side was really uh, shaking the boat up. So we'll see what Rod comes up with. And uh, he already went down to take a peek. And apparently it's, uh, it's nothing but net. And he gone. So yeah, this marina is something else. Geez, Rodney's is pretty good that time. Rod works on pools a lot, and uh, as you can tell, he's a pretty damn good swimmer too. So being underneath the boat doesn't bother him as much as it does me. How's that looking? She's thick. It's thick, eh? Okay. Man, Rod's last, Rod, Rod's last go. Look what he pulled out of that prop. Oh, pretty nice job, brother. I think we might have one little bit more. Oh yeah? Just a tad? Not sure yet, but. Well, that's only a uh, nice. <laughs> oh shit, look at that. It even had the weights on that rope. I wonder that. The was... black one with the lead. Yeah. Crazy. Wicked job, buddy. Wicked. One more shot. And nice. Nicely done. All right, Rodney, the master diver. We're going to call him, uh, what was that guy's name? Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo, <laughs> Scuba Steve. Was there one? Scuba Steve. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Look at the jungle gym. Yeah. I don't know why the, the boat was shaking a little bit. That's all lead weight. There's lead weight. Incredible. Yeah. So that was bound tight. It was just a giant ball. Just a giant ball of crap. Look at that. Awesome. That was on the prop you used to get home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the go home prop or the come here prop. And this or, yeah, was the. Yeah. This was the. I just left it in gear because I can't let the tranny slip um, in neutral. So anyway, uh, Rodney, God save. Awesome job, brother. Awesome job. A couple brother. of dives, but... Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, Chardonnay. Friggin' wicked boat. Uh, props are all cleaned out. Uh, Rod did an amazing job. Took him quite a bit, though. There's a hell of a mess. 
And uh, I'll give you guys a little tour of this place. It is manicured and landscaped just like I've never seen anything before. Um, unbelievable. The place is empty. Um, I did ask them. They said January, February. That's when it picks up. But it's probably one of the nicest, aside from all the bird shit, uh, but it's probably, without a doubt, one of the nicest marinas I've ever been to. Um, full power, full water. Water, it's Mexican water. Um, so obviously there's no pressure. And um, I'm mean, just waiting for Rodney to come down. We're going to head up to the resort slash hotel slash whatever uh, for a little bite to eat. And there is our jungle gym that Rod took out of the props again. I'm freaking believable. Like, like that's, <laughs> that's a lot of mess. Anyway, ready to go, brother? Yep. All right, guys, check this out. All to ourselves, pretty much. <laughs> Apparently, January or February is the time to come here. Uh, but check this out. I don't know if these are condos or what's going on here. Check out the tiki hut. Check out the pool. The grounds are beautiful. Look at the mountains from the behind. Stunning. Really nice. Hola amigos. Buenos días. ¿Cómo está? Chardonnay is getting a bath, full scrub, and he's doing an amazing job, I think. Wicked. She's getting a uh, full top down, I'm already vacuumed, cleaned, got some more stuff to do on the inside, and uh, she's getting uh, pampered. And then we're off to uh, Progresso, uh, 3 a.m. tomorrow morning. So, but look at the view here. I'm really starting to like this place. And good morning. It is approximately uh, 1.30 a.m. for once. And uh, we have just left the beautiful, beautiful uh, marina. pulled out of uh, Lerma, um, what you see in the background all there, that's all the Campeche. So, uh, highly recommend guys. Morning Rod. Good day. <laughs> I highly recommend uh, you guys get a chance to stop into Campeche. It is something else. Really, truly beautiful. Big mountains. Gorgeous out here. So we'll, uh, by the looks of it, we are a 3, 3.15 p.m. Uh, stop. So uh, fingers crossed everything goes good and no fishing nets tonight or this morning. So uh, we'll be there at 3 o'clock. It's going to be a beautiful cruise. Talk to you soon.